Welcome to the Vendor for Small Business tutorial on how to set up an online shop in under 10 minutes. In this tutorial we're going to set up an online clothing store, working through the main sections of the Vendor for Small Business dashboard. Let's start the stopwatch so we can see how long this takes, and to kick off let's go straight to Manage Shop Settings and Manage Domains. You can register two domain names free with your subscription to Vendor for Small Business and add an unlimited number of domains already registered. Just search on the domain you want and if it's available, proceed to register it. For any domain name on your account, set up email addresses. Your email addresses can deliver email to your mailbox or forward email to any other email address. Let's go back to Manage Shop Settings and apply some email notification settings. Here you must specify the email address your customer's order confirmation email is sent from, as well as the shop owner's email address to receive a copy of the sales confirmation email, and an email address to capture inquiries submitted through your inquiry page. Your shop can automatically calculate shipping fees based on the rules you create. Shipping methods can be calculated by total product weight, value, or the number of ordered products. Let's add a European shipping method calculated by weight. Give the shipping method a name, apply a base cost, you can set that to zero if you prefer, and take advantage of the free delivery upsell feature. Then start applying weight bands and specify prices against each band. The same approach applies for the calculation method based on total basket value. The shipping fee charged corresponds to the relevant band's price. Each shipping method must be associated with a region and you can choose if taxes can be applied to the shipping method. Let's take a quick look at the cost per product method. The majority of the fields are the same, but here we've entered a price for the cost of the total number of items in the customer's basket. Again, regions and taxes should be applied as required. The next stage is to link to your PayPal account to take payments online. PayPal offer two services to process payments, PayPal Website Payments Standard and PayPal Website Payments Pro. Linking to PayPal is easy. Enter the payment method name and your PayPal account email address. If you use PayPal Website Payment Standard, that's all you need to do. You can choose to activate PayPal Express Checkout on your shop. If you use Website Payments Pro, just tick the tick box for that. Website Payment Pro is the professional checkout process which seamlessly integrates credit and debit card fields into your online shop, so it's a much more professional checkout process. Set the transaction mode to delay capturing of payments and apply 3D secure settings for additional online payment security. That's our shop settings done. Let's move into Manage Catalog to start adding our products. What you can see here are some example products, so let's bulk import our real products from a CSV file to save time. You can create a CSV file in Microsoft Excel. This is a really straightforward process. You select your file, preview it, then start mapping the data fields. What's great about this is that you can automatically create category pages and import product images held on a third-party server. You can also update products using the import wizard. Once all your data is mapped, then you just apply your import settings. And then you just confirm to import your products. Let's search for a product that I want to add some more images to and start editing it using the Add Edit Product screen. I can add five images for a product which are displayed on the Product Details page. Just click on the image placeholder and upload the image file from your desktop. I can add other useful product information such as options. Let's create a choice list option to display some basic sizes such as small, medium and large. I can assign stock quantities for each choice value as well as an incremental price value which is added to the product's base price when the choice is selected. The choice list drop down selection will then be displayed on the product details page. 
Stock settings are applied for the catalog as a whole, but I can override these on a per product basis, so stock control is active on my choice option quantities. I can also apply specific search engine optimization information for each product, overriding any general search engine information I've applied. A great upsell and cross-sell mechanism is the alternative and related products feature which lets you select any number of products to be displayed under the alternative or related product tabs on the product details page. You'll become more and more familiar with this method of selecting products as it's used throughout the dashboard. And finally, if the standard tax such as VAT is not relevant for this specific product, it can easily be removed. Before we move on to the Manage Website section, it's worth pointing out some of the other features in Manage Catalog, such as publishing to Google Base, which is a free integration and indexes your products in Google's shopping comparison search results, and also the Promotions and Discount feature to create promotion codes and display sale items at was now prices. So let's move into the Manage Website section and select a template. There are a wide range of standard templates to choose from. If you prefer a custom look and feel to suit to your brand, a bespoke template can be created. We have free tools available for designers to create custom templates and a list of experienced design providers available on our website. Now we're moving into the Content Management section, which is unlike any other part of the dashboard. Here you can see the website map which lists all the pages in our shop, including all information pages and category pages. It's simple to create a new page, just place your cursor on the relevant root page and click the Add Page button, then give your page a name. The page selected in the website map can be seen in the Preview pane. To edit that page, click the Edit Page tab. Each page is made up from a series of page sections which follow the same layout with the same page sections contained in the top part and the bottom part and three columns in the middle, which is where most of the editing occurs. You'll become very familiar with the layout very quickly. Let's start by adding our logo. To edit a page section, just click on the pen icon. A WYSIWYG editor is available to format content and to upload images. To add an image, simply click on the Upload Image button and select the image file from your desktop. Next. Let's rename our category menu title, then add some new page sections. The Page Sections tab is available when in the Edit Page mode. To add a page section, just click on the page section and holding down your mouse key, drag and drop the new page section to the required position on the page. It's really simple. This is a featured product page section, and once again we're working with the product lists. The complete product inventory is available in the left column ready to select products to be included as featured products listed on the right. I can add as many products as I like to my featured products list. Next, I'm adding a new text and image page section to display a PayPal logo to assure my customers payments are processed securely. I've clicked on the HTML view button in the WYSIWYG editor so I can drop the PayPal logo display code into my page section. Now I'm going to add a mood image to the middle text and image page section to enhance the branding for my home page. The same process is used. Click on the pen icon to edit the page section and upload the image from the desktop. Clicking back on the preview page tab, our home page looks much different now. There are still a couple more settings to look at. For those, I can go to Format Product Display to indicate how products should be displayed on pages. For example, if prices should be displayed inclusive or exclusive of VAT. I can control if product stock information should be shown and what messaging is displayed. And finally, we can activate an enlarge image view to display the product image in a Java pop-up window, as well as a zoom function for the product image to see the product in more detail. Now let's publish our site. And let's stop the clock now as we're ready to take a look around our shop. So here you can see our home page which has our featured products on it. Let's click through to look at the product details for that featured product. And here's an enlarged product details image. And also you can see we've got the product details, the description and the click to zoom feature again for that 
product image and scrolling down we have our related products and uh, our alternative products which we can click through to and then we've got our option selection and then adding the product to the shopping cart we have our shopping cart summary which gives us all the details of the product I've selected and then I can check out to purchase that particular product. So that concludes our 10 minute tutorial. We have more videos available on our YouTube channel and further advice is available from our support desk at support.vendor-sbs.com.